Aloha, Alafia, and welcome everybody to your full moon at 27 degrees of Airy reading. This full moon happens on October 20th at 4.57 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time, so make sure you do the math for your location. And this moon is a lot of we versus me energy. So we have the sun in Libra, which is that we energy, this um, partnership energy, the relationships, how we relate to others, what we do with others. And that is in conjunction with Mars currently. So Mars is actually behind the sun, pushing the sun forward with purpose, with drive, in a conjunction and the opposition of the moon, which makes obviously the full moon, in Aries, which is Mar is ruled by Mars. So Aries is all about the I, all about the I, all about the individual. What do I need? What? How do I move forward in the world? How do I show up in the world? Um, it's a very youthful energy, the start of the zodiac. So we have this really interesting play, this kind of... Um, wishy-washy imbalance that we may be dealing with throughout this moon. You know, we want to please everybody, but in pleasing everybody, which can be shadow side of Libra, we block our personal harmony, which is the exalted side of Aries. We want to, um, we want to have these commitments to other people to make these plans and these commitments to others. However, does that interfere with the commitments to ourself and what we're doing in our life? We want to play and we want to enjoy our playtime with others, but is that play for your highest good? So it's these really questions between the we and the me's of life that we are here to explore during this full moon. A couple of other things is there is a T-square with Pluto. Pluto is T-squaring the sun, the moon, and Mars. and there's again we talked about this before in in the last reading pluto will never be at the 24 degrees of capricorn again so there is this finality there is something that you can no longer ignore happening during this moon cycle and we have pluto which or pluto excuse me jupiter which is direct in aquarius helping us with our expansion helping us with the next thing that we're already underway this isn't something that you may be already starting you've probably already started it at this point and then to round it all out we have mercury which is also direct at this time as well and just went direct still in shadow phase though and Chiron really working with our throat chakra so that way we truly can speak, if not just to ourselves, but to others, what this we and me looks like for our highest good. So let's go ahead and get started. Oh, one thing I do want to say, um, even throughout this reading, and I chose the guidance deck today. It's a new deck I just got. I'm super excited about it. Um, and I, I was called to pull live out of this deck. There's no cancer. There is nothing happening in cancer during this moon. And typically with the T-square, with all of this action energy, cancer is the sign that can really ground us and bring us home. It can bring us that peace we can find through our emotions and kind of work through our emotions with the energies of cancer. So there's really no Cancerian energy that's supporting us right now, which we kind of need. So we want to, um, I pulled this new deck that I got, which is the African Goddess Tarot. Again, all links will be below. And to bring in that kind of um, Cancerian, very motherly, very goddess sort of energy to help guide us in what positive action looks like. All right, let's get started. First question, where are we out of balance between what we want and what others are asking us to commit to? The two cards that we got are the Wheel of Fortune as well as the King of Swords. So with these two cards, we could be going through this cycle, right? The wheel of fortune is all about the cycles. It's all about the polar opposites. This we versus me showing up right in the first card, which is, you know, that 
I've accepted my destiny. I know I'm on this path. It's the ups and downs. It's a perpetual motion machine. It's the good and the bad things. It's the destiny and chance. It's the conclusion and fate. It's all of these opposites are kind of happening right now. So potentially you have accepted your destiny. You know where you want to go. You've, you've planted your flag. Um, the concrete exactly hasn't dried yet around that flag post, but it is done. You've done the work. You know what you want. You've stood your ground. You said this is what it is. And you are diligently working towards creating that and manifesting that into your reality. Here comes along charisma. Here comes along a king of swords that's cut quick. Um, they've got the power. They've got this authority. They've got this massive charisma around them. And they're like, hey, why don't we go do this? And you're like, well, wait a minute. Hold on. That doesn't really align. No, 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 no. Don't worry about what does and doesn't align. This is an amazing opportunity. How could you how could you say no to this? Look, it's going to be this and this and I'm going to pay for this and this is going to happen. Whatever this great story is, they want you to commit to something. And you're maybe in that space where again, that flag post, this this full wheel hasn't exactly turned yet to solidify and lock you into place in where you know you're going. You are being challenged right now, and especially during this full moon cycle, to recognize when the King of Swords is around. And it could be something really, really simple. It could be you've started a new cycle of, you've planted your flag, you are gonna go and do the, you know, Noble the Coaches 60 day um, to the end of the year challenge. Great, that's what I'm doing. I'm focusing on my health and well being. You go into the grocery store, and let's just say, for example, a large warehouse that has lots of fancy snacks in it and people, you know, trying to give you things. And you just get somebody that's like, hey, 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 try this, try this. It's great chocolate. It's great this. You have to know and stand in your power. And that is really what you are looking at balancing over this moon, this we versus me, being able to stand there and tell that person in that large warehouse, I really appreciate what you're doing and I appreciate that you think that this is really great. However, I'm doing a 60 day challenge. I am accountable for things and I'm gonna stick to that right now and then move on. Um, so that could be some of those where you may feel some of this balance or out of balance come with, these could be some of those situations that are coming up during this full moon cycle. Next question, which battle is it time to release attachment to? Um, a couple of the shadow sides of Aries is attachment. Um, it is in that battle mode, right? Aries, uh, Mars being the ruler, it's a, it's a fire sign, it's heavy energy and it's all about the go, go, go. So what battle is it time to release attachment to? And we have the Ace of Cups and the Six of Cups. So funny, remember at the beginning I said, Cancer is kind of nowhere around. We don't really have a lot of emotional energy right now um, supporting us. And here in what is it time to release attachment to comes the emotional energy, comes the water, um, comes that Cancerian energy. So Ace of Cups talks about your intuition, your set, your, you know, sentiment, the abundance of life that you have, especially as an ace, right? Um, it's your emotional fulfillment. So again, in that emotional realm. So what battle could it be time to release for some of us? Is this stop fighting with your intuition? Stop again. If you watched the last moon reading, the new moon in Libra, um, there was this conversation about the, the our self talk, what we tell ourselves. We are still within that moon cycle, right? So we had the new moon. We'll have the full moon and then we go back to the new moon. So we are still within that moon cycle and we are still being challenged with those self talks. And here it comes again. What do you need to release attachment to that self doubt of abundance, the self doubt 
of intuition. Um, attaching yourself to a story that says, I'm not worthy, I can't, I don't have the right intuition, my intuition has failed me before, um, I don't connect with my intuition, I don't believe in gut feelings, I don't believe in a higher power or whatever. Um, those are all fine if that's truly what you believe, but there is something that is drawing you. You wouldn't be watching this video if it wasn't, right? So know that even if it's not, you know, praying to a higher power that suits you, maybe it is something that's just acknowledging your worth, worthiness and what you can achieve in this life and not tying an emotion to it. Again, there's a lot of this emotion that sits. There is no other cups on this spread. Your emotion sits in your attachments. So really think about how those attachments are making you feel and work towards that. That could be your intuition guiding you to see what is, what attachment you really have and you need to release. The Six of Cups talks about this nostalgia. Again, those stories we tell ourselves, who we think we are, this nostalgia for the way that it was. Um, it was funny, my partner and I were talking the other day and he goes, I, I heard somebody say that we're like 15 months or whatever into a pandemic. And he's like, I, we're still in a pandemic, right? So I still hear people talk about oh, well, when it gets back to normal, we are where we are and we're not going back. That is what you need to release the attachment to, the nostalgia, what holds you in the past, these bittersweet memories that you have, this want of fulfillment, this want of pleasure that you used to have that is no longer maybe for you, um, and these kind of emotions that are attached to that. So for some of us, again, it could be residing within our intuition. For others, it could be residing in that past. It is time. Again, I know that the flag is planted. It may not be completely solidified in the cement, in the cement yet. However, these, in order to continue to dry your dry that cement around your flagpole releasing these attachments are going to be necessary for you to make that wheel turn all the way over to be able to stand in your power and move forward next question what part of our life needs action and strength and this is why releasing attachments are so important because we have the six of wands as well as the magician so the six of wands, six of wands is all about our earnings. It's all about what we do in life to earn our money. It's all about how we advance, how we get recognized, how we attain things and the energy of fire, right? Fire is really personal. Aries is a fire sign, Leo, Sagittarius. Um, all of those energies is really out front and saying, look at me, look at what I obtain, look at what I can do. and in a humble way. Yes, the shadow side is not ever so humble, right? That's where greedy hubris and all of those other things come in from. But in a healthy way, it is okay to achieve. It is okay to go for your dreams and to accomplish them and celebrate that. And that's where the action and strength needs to be. It needs to be in this attainment of your goals. It needs to be in, in earning what you deserve, in getting the recognition that you deserve in a healthy and balanced manner. Again, the we versus me. Sometimes it is okay to clap for your damn self. Not everybody, again, going back to this we versus me moon where we're going to be going through this cycle, not everybody needs to know all of your business or all of your success. It is quite all right to achieve something, sit down in a moment of silence by yourself and go, you did good. Let's go to the next thing. And when somebody asks you about it, sure, say, yeah, I absolutely, I achieved that a couple of weeks ago. That is okay. And that sometimes is very necessary. When we get to the magician, this is talking about you know what needs action and that strength it's that part of us that wants to grow 
Where are you growing? This is what needs that action and strength of Mars, pushing that sun forward, really driving into that purpose. And what this moon cycle is all about is really honing in on where you wanna go, what actions you need to take, understanding the gifts that you have to make those actions complete. Understanding you can manifest anything that you want if you put action behind it. You also have to, action is also in the releasing. In that releasing, you have opened up space to create more of your advancement, to create more of this magic that can come into your life. And that's what part of our life really needs this action and support right now. It's, it's all of this I am energy that needs our that needs our action and support and to be strengthened again in releasing the stories that we tell ourselves and releasing this attachment to this nostalgia and you know I haven't been or I couldn't have and all of those things that we want to tell ourselves releasing all of that and allowing new affirmations of power and of strength and of resilience and of action and of growth to come in and fill that space. Last question, what part of our life can we no longer ignore? Death and the eight of wands came out. We can't ignore our transformation anymore. You've tried that. You've probably done that for years now. It didn't work out so well, right? Transformation, death, will always come. The wheel will always continue turning. And it doesn't matter if, like, look at this guy. It doesn't matter if you've put yourself in this really awkward position that, you know, your legs are gonna break if this kind of keeps turning. Doesn't matter. It's going to turn. You can't stop it. So it's in this, you can't ignore this change and transformation. You can't ignore the fact that Pluto is, you know, is spending its last moments at 24 degrees of Capricorn. You can't ignore that you have this ability to manifest at a high level. You can't ignore your powers anymore. They are coming out even if you don't want to admit it, right? They are coming out. So as we looked with the Eight of Wands, there is this progress, this change, this um, dynamic purpose coming forward, and it can't be ignored anymore. It needs to be acknowledged. It needs to have space created for it. It needs to turn, and it needs to have magic um, come in and bring it forth. And the three words that actually come with this death card in this deck says, cut, end, and loss. That's what we can't ignore anymore. Things that we need to cut from our life, loss that needs to happen, and the endings that bring in new beginnings. That is what we cannot ignore. All right, so again, this is the African Goddess Rising deck. Um, it is an oracle deck, so this will be our guidance that I will be pulling. This deck just came out. Again, all links will be below. Um, I will be doing a product review on this deck, so watch for that shortly. Again, make sure to like and subscribe. That's how you know when new videos are posted. And it is October, my most favorite month, so um, we have Sahween at the end of the month, and I will be doing uh, all signs readings for that. So again, make sure to like and subscribe so that way you know when your reading is posted. All right, so we are looking at the keys to positive action. Again, um, cancer is kind of nowhere to be found. We need that motherly, waterly, water energy right now. So the question is, is what is um, our key? What is our guidance to positive action during this new moon, or excuse me, full moon cycle? Oh, beautiful. We got two. All right, so we got a set, surrender. And we've got scarcity, and I am not going to say the name until I look at the book um, for the pronunciation. Um, but I mean, 
this deck is so beautiful. I'm so excited that it's here. So let's take a look and see what is our key to positive action. Again, we have a set at um, the number 44. So double fours as well as an eight. All right, a set is the goddess of spiritual surrender. She is from Nubia and Egypt. Her temple is high priestess. Her element is bush. Goddess Aset is revered as a magical healer and sorceress. She is of 10,000 names. You may know her as Isis, her Greek name, or Aset, Aset, or Wuset. Aset was worshipped in ancient Nubia, the Sudan region, Egypt, and beyond. Her guidance says, let it all go. Say out loud now, I surrender. These words cast a spell, breathe them in, release control, stop bonding around struggle, hand the keys to the divine, allow spirit to carry you and fill in the gaps. You don't have to figure it all out. God, goddess, has your back. Have faith in where you are at this moment. Her affirmation or declaration in this deck is everything I need to know finds me at the perfect time. So as we look towards positive action, this is really that positive action of releasing our attachments, hence why it sat down right on top of those cards. So again, it is supporting you. The goddess energy is sitting here and supporting you to release these attachments during this moon cycle um, to help you bring forth. You know, she here is nurturing a child. Um, nurture, and that is exceptionally cancerian energy but nurture all of your dreams nurture that child within you nurture new stories to be developed for you all right so this number is 21 so a three and it doesn't have a um, pronunciation so i'm gonna try my best um sequoiant the Shadow of Scarcity. She is from Trinidad and the Diaspora, Temple of Shadows, Element Air. Beauty by day and hag by night. The Soy Koyant is an energy vampire, also known throughout the diaspora as Olohigu or Buhag. Whether energy or blood for vampires, there is never enough to go around. Her Shadow Guidance. You have so much more than you realize. You have access to unlimited joy, love, good times, pleasures, and prosperity. Be grateful for your riches. Stop going to the ocean and asking for a thimble full of water. It doesn't feel like it when you're desperate, but scarcity and lack are an illusion. Prosperity is believing that there is an overflow, more than enough love, happiness, well-being, and money to go around. Vampires take from others because they don't have enough life force for themselves. That is scarcity consciousness. When you embody lack, you are always hungry, tired, and jealous. Make a gratitude list. What are you grateful for right now? Her declaration, my blessings always overflow. And again, this is right sat right on top of what part of our life needs strength, our earnings, our ability to manifest. Um, it's all right here. You need to know that you can. Don't sit in that scarcity. Don't sit in the lack. All right, beautiful ones. Thank you so much for joining me. That has been your full moon in Aries reading. Again, make sure to like, subscribe, share if you know somebody that would benefit from this reading. All of the links and, and everywhere to find me will be in the description box below. I will see you in just probably just a week and a half, yay, for the Sahween readings, as well as then going into um, the next new moon in November. Bye.